Okay, you want to buy a property, but you cannot buy it now, and you're feeling a little bit anxious about this market pulling away from you, but it's all about your financials. Do we have a solution for you? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes, episode 396. Uh, lay by after pay your, for your property. Has, has COVID-19 screwed your 2020 financial statements? I think this would be, this would impact a lot of people, Mark, where they've had a great 10 years, 20 years working, great couple years, saved a big deposit, were going for a loan, had pre-approval, they had to shut down their business, income stopped, and they want to buy, but the 2020 financials just aren't there. Yes, some banks are excluding them, but not all banks are. What's the solution? Because people are forecasting 20% growth mark over the next two years. So do you just cop it on the chin and cop and have to buy back in, buy into the market at a 20% higher rate, or is there a solution? And it's not hard to do the maths of what that FOMO maths um, that people have. So they're thinking, hang on a sec, I want to buy a unit for 700 grand, 500 grand maybe. Um, okay, 500 grand, say. They're going, you know what? I, I know I'm going to be there in 12 months' time. I know I am. Like, work's good, business is good, life's good, figures will be good. But I also know in my heart that I'm going to, the market's going to be up at least 10, 10%, potentially more. So I'm going to have to pay 50 grand more. And I've just say I've just taken five years saving a fifty grand deposit, so now I'm gonna to have to pay fifty more for a property in a year's time because of how I look on paper. But a lot of people on paper, believe it or not, on purpose didn't want to look good on paper through through COVID. Very Do you know true. what I mean? So, and I feel really awkward about it, saying that there'd be people like this in the marketplace. But you know, there was incentives for the government that if you weren't making money, so a lot of people took the small uh, uplift, um, and then they didn't realise in the long run they screwed themselves because their financials aren't looking good. And and I know banks can't can't um, uh, use this against you, but uh, why do they ask the question of? Did you take any job uh, job keeper job keeper seeker payments when you're going for a loan? If it's not a consideration, so there is some sort of consideration there, whatever that may be. And I think this is great. This is a great solution. What we've got for everyone today. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because a lot of people who may not be in business may not know what the structure was for a business owner. They knew their personal one, but for a company, if you were down thirty percent in revenue you were able to get incentives that way. So uh, some people took cash, some people closed for two or three days. However, they got the drop. They were very incentivized to do so. But then when you apply for a loan, your revenue's down 30%. So it's it, it was a double-edged sword for some people. Um, so what 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 can someone do mark are you talking a long settlement um are you talking about i don't know buying land and building what's a good solution if someone wants to get in the market but they can't necessarily finance it right now it, it's a solution but it's speculative it's a solution but it is speculative and there is risk but in your heart of hearts sometimes you go you know what i just know it's the right thing to do and guess what it is it's off the plan we've got as an example, we've got a, a one-bedroom unit for sale for six seventy-five. We've got a two-bedroom unit for sale for nine fifty. If you put down ten percent today, you don't have to pay a mortgage for two years, but you have price locked the property for twenty-four months' time, for two years' time. 
Now, a couple of things. You've got to be sure that you're going to be able to get the loan in two years. You're going to be sure that you've got to have a job and a, and a stable income over the next two years in order to do this. But you just go, mate, oh, you must get, oh, you know, oh, business is great. It, it's, it can't wave in the next two years. My deposit is good. It's there. And I know in this core market or where I'm going to buy, that this, this core market's going to kick in the next year or two. What a great idea. Yeah, and even if like yeah, it's a bonus if the market goes up. But even if it stays sti- stay still, you would have had two years to get your finances to get the loan. Because even if the market doesn't go up, you can't buy it now, but you will be able to finance it in two years with the ba- with the bank records. And if you're buying a property, it's either essential because you need it or you believe that's the path for wealth creation. And there's always going to be micro markets, like good times and bad times within a three-year period. But over the long run, you know you're going to be better off. We touched on it yesterday. We're working longer. We've got longer to have our investment property. So you know you just need to get into the market. And it's almost like you've got the deposit now. A lot can happen in two years where you spend it, spend it, and it whittles down. So the bonus is the market going up, but even if it's just securing a property, get the deposit out of your savings account, which is very accessible, and just have that locked in, and then you just spend the next two years working, saving for, most of the time people are getting loans with five to 15% of the value. So if you've already put a 10% down, you've got two years to get another 5%, you can be quite comfortable to finance that, even if the price has moved even if the price goes a little bit down and if the price goes up you're laughing so it's i I like that i like that and you can't forget that um if if we are buying something y'all buying something off the plan um it would yeah if y'all buy something off the plan um (laughs) it would be good to buy in an area that has low supply and low potential of supply and what i mean by that is you just don't want to go into a part of sydney or queensland or wherever that may be where there's going to be a bucket load of units dropping in two years time that's going to put a downward pressure on your property so the secret i would i would or the solution i would put, i would put on the table is a low supply suburb together with off the plan i potentially think you're a real winner i've done it myself with my own money but just double check the density of the suburb because sometimes you think a lot of units are being built, but in the overall it's not. Like, Mark, we had this in DY. Everyone was like, so many units yeah. being built in 2017, 18. And when you took the step back, going, yeah, 300 are being built. Well, actually, 600 were being built, but it's out at 9,000. And they're like, oh, out okay, of, not as over much. 40, over, over 10, 15 years. Yes. Nothing. But when it's 600 being built and there's only. 50 and they're building a new suburb uh, okay what's going to be the take up here or even if it's 50 units being built and there's no units what will the take up be when it's a heavily house area i know i was speaking to a buddy who works i forget where it's um somewhere where it's heavily resident there's not many units and there's a few unit blocks going up but it's basically a house area. So units, they seem good, but they're not selling as, as quick. So there's things to look for. So don't be deterred when you see three or four buildings going up if there's already an established, if anything, I'd rather buy in a suburb that has a th- 5,000 established units and they're building a thousand more, especially if you see them uh, turning rather than a suburb which may have 5,000 homes, but only a hundred units and they're building 500 units. So it, you've just got to look for that, especially when people are buying interstate, which I don't really recommend because think of your own suburb. You know there's sometimes, ah. a, if there's, um, you know there's a good side of the street and sure. a bad side of the street. How will you know that in Gold Coast? How? You just know. I, look, I, I don't want to bash up the GC, but I was talking to a, good, a school friend of mine last night who we manage a property for, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> and I bought, I bought, I got this place, killer. I got this place, killer. And we bought something off the plan in up north. I'm not going to, uh, in Queensland. But it's, and he said, 
And he thought he's, he's, you could literally hear out his hand in his head. He's like, yeah. hasn't done any capital growth in five or six years. And I was like, what? Like, where, how does that happen? And that's yeah. how it happens. Too much, too much supply dropped in. Now, a couple of myths, Michael. Um, yes, Tell us. The, when you put down a 10% deposit, lay by, after pay, price lock style, if the property is worth 500000 when you put your deposit down and it is potentially worth 600000 in two years' time, do you pay five hundred or six hundred? Have you locked your price five hundred price in and don't have to pay more? It's all locked in at five hundred, and new legislation has made it very hard for developers, very close, impossible for them to pull out to screw you. I've had that with a few meetings. Like, yeah, but aren't developers able to get out of it? They've changed all that December first, two thousand and nineteen. So if the property is worth a lot more, you've basically locked it in at the lower price. Bravo, protect it. Okay, so that's so that's price lock. Do you have to pay a mortgage for the five hundred thousand for the next two years with no rent coming in because it's an off the plan property? No, technically you haven't even gone for your loan. You put the ten percent, secured it. You don't go for finance until it's ready. Nothing to pay, just like lay by. Then you get to go through when it's finished, make sure it's what it's what you've yep. committed, it's what you bought, and check, check, check. Any other myths? Oh, it, warranty building insurance. Bad building? Yeah, bad building. There's personal guarantees on the developer now, so they can't just close down the company. You've got six months when you've moved in to just check PowerPoints and if that's working and then most buildings have years uh, insurance as well. So you, there's a lot of protection on, um, a lot's been learnt over the last say 10 years of people being screwed, bad things happening. Um, and a lot of that's been rectified. We have a very, sometimes you hate it how proactive and much red tape is put into everything from, uh, yeah, don't get me started on rants like that. But there's been a, there's a lot of buy, consumer protection around off the plan and construction. So I think you need to have faith with that, and be pre and yeah, I think that's the simplest way to put it. It's not the wild wild and west. That, and that's a wrap. So in in conclusion, after pay. <laughs> it's actually it's pay after I should say. Yeah. Or lay buying or um, price lock, all of those things, if you are not eligible to jump into a property, lock, stock and barrel today, you do have a solution to buy off the plan. And that's also a great op, which I like because you're not competing for the one property in an open house and outbidding each other. Off the plan stuff, you can actually just point and shoot and you've got a selection of properties that you can actually buy. So you don't- Fixed prices um, generally. Yeah. You know, the price isn't running on you like some of these property prices at the moment. You put an offer in, next thing you know, it's gone for 50 grand more or 30 grand more. Yeah. And that's not because the agent's playing games. It's just for the market. So it's really good to see a fixed price, put a small deposit down, do your due diligence, and then pay the and then pay the balance. It's. I think it's going to come very, very popular in the next coming weeks. And fortunately, we have a building in DY to sell you. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Jing, thank you, everyone. See you guys.